Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, loss. Weekend come. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, loss. And man, that was so, so difficult. But now I look back at it and I think that was just something that I needed to go through because now I'm at the point of where I don't care if I lose. This is The Profit Factor, a podcast where we explore topics around edge, process, and mindset to help traders become consistently profitable. All right. So welcome, everybody. Glad you guys are here. I'm here with John, also known as Twist. Is it Twist or Twist? It's hard for me to say it. Twists. Because you got yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you said it right the first time. Yeah, that's uh, that's the right pronunciation. So just Twist, but it's not yeah, Twist yeah. plural. No. I love it. I love it. I want to ask about that because, um, uh, you know, it's always interesting to me where people kind of get their handles And I'd love to know where that comes from. Like, is it something meaningful to you or was it just something on random that you fell into? Um, Okay. So not a lot, not a lot of people know, but um, I used to be an ex uh, online gamer back in in the day of um, Call of Duty, Ghost Recon, Thunder Island 2 used to play on the on the game battles format which was um like a european and and sort of world league stage for online gaming and i used to get a little bit twisted annoyed <laughs> that kind of thing so it, <laughs> the name, rage the name, out. yeah so the name kind of stuck that oh here's john getting twisted again so like the name the name kind of stuck and yeah and i've carried with it with it ever since I still game, but not, not to the degree that I used to. Um, yeah. I, use it, I use it more for pleasure now, as opposed to the competitive side of what, <laughs> what it was back in, back in I can't remember, 2000, 2001. Uh, so we're talking a good, you know, a good few years ago, but we were good. Like, you know, um, we were, we were number one in Europe for, for Ghost Recon at the wow. time and, and, we were un, <laughs> and we were unbeatable. And at that time, when I was that age, I thought it was a pretty cool thing. But when I look back at it now, I just think, what a dick. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I've, I've lost, lost relationships, you know, wouldn't do anything other than practice. So it, it, yeah, it kind of becomes a little bit, a little bit consuming, a little bit like, like trading is to a degree, because yeah. one of my main personality traits is I'm full in all in or, or nothing. And I give myself mm-hmm. everything um, to what I'm doing. Yeah. And it, it can be a blessing sometimes, but it can also be a curse. So I've learned to, I've learned to deal with it in a, in a more healthier way. Let's put it, let's put it that way as opposed to how it used to be where it was sort yeah. of self, self-consuming. But the thing with me is like, if I've got something in my head, I have to do it and I have to complete it and I can't focus on anything else until I've done that. Um, to give you an example, back in 2021, I just woke up one day and I was like, right, I want to get my motorbike license. I don't want to, I don't want to ride a little shitty bike I want to get the best license that gives me authority on the UK roads to ride the biggest, baddest bike. I don't know why <laughs> I, I came to that conclusion one day, but because I got it in my head, yeah, it was like, right, I've got to do this now. I've got to go through the motions. And I did, and I did everything. I started in October and I passed in December um, and I did everything that I needed to do. But yeah, it's just, that's just unfortunately one of my, one of my personality traits. And like I said, sometimes it can be a blessing. Sometimes it can be a curse. So. so is it like, do you get the, you said you get all twisted up. Like that's kind of where your name came from. Like, yeah. is that with, was that just with the gaming stuff or is that with everything? Because you're so intensely focused on, that I got to get this done. Yes. And then if, and then if like the outcomes aren't coming along then yeah. it becomes problematic. Yeah, 100%. Um, it, it's been it's been something that I kind of knew was there, but never never realized or never never saw it as an issue before. And it, it was never anything that, that sort of hindered with my personal life to, to a degree that was sort of, you know, at the forefront of my mind. Maybe subconsciously it was in the back of my mind. But it was never it was never something that I thought I needed to work on, right? So yeah. I just I just got on with it, um, yeah. and it was almost like a case of, you know, when people were pointing it out to me, it was in my mind I'm thinking, no, you're wrong, I'm not wrong, you're wrong for thinking that about me, and it was very, I was very stubborn and very, let's just say we have a, a UK saying called cocksure. 
which means, you know, very full of myself, yeah. very confident. You know, I wouldn't admit when I was wrong kind of mentality. And, you know, for me, if someone says, John, you're too obsessive with something, I'd ignore it and it'd be, no, you know, you're incorrect. I'm, I'm doing what I want to do because this is this is my life and, and to hell with what, what anyone else thinks. And, you know, as, as time moves on and as you get older and as you go through stages in life, you begin to realize that sometimes that can be quite selfish. But yeah, I mean, my, my psychology and mindset has improved a hell of a lot since starting trading as well, because even though I kind of curbed that sort of personality to a degree, there was still traits of that coming through um, when I started to trade because I knew that it would be difficult, but I just didn't realize how hard it was going to be. And I think there was a little bit of arrogance there to say that, you know, within maybe, you know, six months that I'd be doing what a professional trader would, would take sort of five to six years. It was very, very naive of me to think that, but, you know, especially when like, you know, you go back to, t I've only been trading six, 15, 16 months. I only started in the academy in when it opened in January of last year. And prior to that, I'd never opened trading view in my life. I'd never, yeah. I'd never even, you know, set foot on that that sort of platform before and into the world of trading. Like I saw it on Instagram, you know, when I was on social media of, you know, the the young lads flashing the watches they're and the Lambos. <laughs> yeah. And I they're rented Lamborghinis. <laughs> exactly. And I could I could never I could yeah. never relate to that. I could never get get my head around around that. And I always used to sort of think the worst about stuff like that. I mean, I'm not not saying that it's not true. You know, I'm sure there are some very young, great traders who who are genuine within the world, but it was nothing that, that sort of enticed me to want to get involved in that. I was quite happy doing what I was doing at the time. So yeah, like I'd never I'd never stepped foot on the charts prior to yeah. joining M7's Academy. So yeah, I mean there was there was an element of coming into it with a little bit of, of arrogance as as well. And then, you know, within sort of three or four months, really knowing that I had to change not only my goals and what and my aspirations for the year were, but also I had to really hone in on changing my psychology because it wasn't anywhere near where I needed it to be at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was something that I really, really needed to, needed to work, work on. Yeah. So just really quick, our audience, the people that are going to listen to this and watch this either now or later are, we have a mix. So we've got some people here that are from M7's Academy that will listen in. We've got people here from the Market Flow Trader community. That's a community where I'm a coach and I, and I coach there. And then we have people that are just been following me on this channel for a number of years. And so I'm going to do my best to kind of like for everybody listening, I'm going to do my best to kind of clarify like when we start talking about like, especially the Academy stuff, because it's yeah, okay. stuff that I don't talk a lot about on the channel. Yeah. Probably should talk more about it. So I know we're going to dive into that. So I just, that's more for everybody else listening. Like we're going to, we're going to get into some of the stuff. I do want to ask like, I, like this, like not ask, but I do want to make a, an observation about you. Like one of the reasons I was really excited to kind of talk to you is because you've been running these student stages in the Academy for the past almost a year. Like I remember when you, you I think you started them, right? Like I, I think yeah, it, was, it was about one. six, it was about six months ago. Yeah. yeah was, like six months ago or so I've been yeah. in since March, by the way. So last March. Okay. So, so yeah. Been, so relatively the same time. Yeah. 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 You, you got that couple month head start, <laughs> which, which might make all the difference. I don't know. But the, the reason I want to call this out is because you, it's clear you have done a lot of work on yourself because you, you come across like, I'm like, twist is like, he's one of the, you're like one of the most intimidating looking guys. Like you look at your picture here, right? <laughs> but you're, you've got to be one of the nicest, you know, most generous, helpful you know, it comes across the way that you interact with other people and the way that you participate in the community. I just want to say that, like, thank you. I, very clear. You've done work. If if that's how you describe yourself before, you know, I, th I think it comes from knowing where I started and knowing the struggles and how difficult yeah. it was at the beginning, and just knowing that there will be other people out there within the academy that will be going through that same process. Yeah. So I kind of think, you know, if I can help someone to either not go through those same struggles that I did by pointing them in the right direction, 
then that's a good thing because ultimately within the academy, it's a very unique sense of community within within the Discord channel because I've been part of social media, I've been part of the trading circle now for 16 months. And the only thing I can reference is, is you know, other, uh, other trading channels. But this seems to be one of those communities where I would say 99.9% of people that are in it all want everybody to succeed. Yeah. And for me, I have to understand that I come from nothing and I owe everything to the trading side of things to M7 and the way that he conducts himself and the way that he has dedicated the last 16 months to people to try and better their lives through trading. So that that spills out onto me because I just think, well, I can give that back because that's all part of the quantum mindset is not only doing it for yourself, but doing it for others and changing other people's lives, which is something that, you know, has always resonated with me anyway. Um, You know, I joined the police in 2000 because I wanted to help people. And a lot of times people will criticize the UK police and and I get why. And I, and I totally understand it, but my intentions for joining were genuine because I really wanted to help people. And I wanted to be on, um, on an area that was, that would make an impact. So, you know, I tried my hardest and I worked up towards working on first response. So it's always been something that I've always sort of had in me to want to do, but this now just gives you a great platform to do that. You know, I have to, I have to give my thanks to M7 because it's his, it's his mantra in the way that he conducts himself and how he expects the community to be with others. It's not about, Oh, I found this, I'm not telling you what to do kind of thing. There is a little bit of that, but it's not from a bad intentional point of view. It's because we don't want, you know, if I find something, but I think it's not potentially potentially the right time to delve into it within the academy because it will contradict what M7 is trying to teach, then that's when I'll hold something back. But it's not because I don't want other people to know what it is I'm doing. It's just, it has to be done at the right time. But ultimately, yeah, I try my best to always, if someone tags me, DMs I'm pretty crap with uh, because Discord's a bit weird. I get a lot of spam stuff going into there. And then trying to answer the questions, trying to, you know, trade at the same time, trying to uh, do the stages and and back test. It comes a little bit overwhelming. And I have to, you know, as much as I do like helping people, I have to recognize that this is still my journey. And if it affects me in the way that, is negative, then I need to just rate it like, you know, back a little bit. Yeah. Um, and that's maybe sometimes when, you know, I don't respond to some, but yeah, ultimately, you know, that's, that's the core, one of the core principles within the Academy is helping people. And yeah. that's, you know, that's got to be a good thing because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether I trade the same as somebody else, we're not competing against each other. And that's what I could never understand with some of the things that you see on Twitter spaces. And this is no disrespect to um, a certain community, but, and I'm not going to mention the name because it's kind of pointless, but there is a certain community that has this it or about them that if you don't trade our way, then you're not doing it right. Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't do it this way, then you're a shit trader. Uh, why are you doing it that way? This is the only way that works. And I can never, I can never get that because, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're trading support and resistance, whether you're trading Bollinger bands, whether you're trading stars aligning with the fucking planets, if it makes you profitable and it, it puts you in a, a better life for you and your family and you're not an asshole, what does it matter? Like, I don't care what anybody else trades. It really doesn't matter yeah. to me. Like I, I trade data and that's what I do and I love it. You know, if someone else trades support and resistance, great. I'm, you know, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm really not bothered what people do, um, but I can never understand that that mentality of, you know, this is what we do, and you know, you're an outcast if you don't do it that way. So, you yeah. know, I'm quite, I'm quite open to helping anybody who asks that, you know, within within the academy or outside the academy, what it is we do, with an open view to 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 listening to me, you know, all, all day long. You know, at the end of the day, you can you can never stop learning, and you know, just because I trade data. It definitely doesn't mean that if somebody comes along with another concept that I understand that can work alongside um, what I'm doing, then again, I'm always open-minded to it. But yeah, this this rivalry within trading is just really peculiar because it's almost like 
it's like, you know, when you, you're rivaling against another business, like I could understand that. Like, you know, if, if I was trying to get, if I was opening a business for something and, and I was asking somebody else and it was rivaling them and I could potentially take their sales and I could understand why they would keep information back. But within the trading space, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, if you, if you're telling me you want to take a short because, you know, X, Y, and Z, and I take the same one, it doesn't impact you. Uh, we both benefit from it. So, you know, that's, that's how I see this experience and why helping people is always going to be, you know, at the forefront of, of this community. So, yeah. I think we're battling a lot of, you know, a lot of misconceptions about, you know, the, the market and the trading community and all kinds of stuff there, right? Like you have this idea of, well, it's a zero sum game. And if you're, if you're winning, somebody else is losing and, and failing. And, and that, that doesn't make me feel good about, <laughs> about anything I do in the market, right? If I, either way. And I don't think that's a, a very accurate or valid way to be thinking. No. And so you get that aspect of competitiveness and then you get this idea of, well, everybody's also a scammer. So going back to your, your point about, you know, the M7 Academy and the community being so generous and helpful. I have that too with the market flow trader. I'm in two communities and that's it. And it's these two communities. And it's partly because I love them. I love the the generosity that flows in these communities and you don't get that everywhere. But it's, I also think that there's way more traders out there willing to help and, and be helpful than yeah. we give this market credit for because the scammers that are out there, the guys that are, you know, the, the real loud guys that, you know, the, the whole do it my way, you know, there's only one way to skin this cat, you know, they're just so loud. And so you think that that's what the market's like. So I think there's some misconceptions too, that, that feed into some of that as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And yeah. um, unfortunately social media will always cloud yeah, for sure. you know, the, the good, the good people amongst uh, the, amongst the communities. And sometimes people won't voice their opinions with, um, with fear of, of doing so. And, and with fear of someone, you know, having a negative, a negative reply on something that they're doing. And it's a shame really, but you know, stuff like that's never bothered me. So, you know, I'm quite fortunate that I've yeah. got thick skin. So like, I'm, I'm really not bothered. You know, I'll, I'll always put out what I feel is good content and what I feel will help others. And I'll always reply to people and try and help yeah. them in a positive way. And, you know, if they, uh, if they benefit from it, great. And, you know, uh, that's, that's how I'll still continue to do it up until, uh, you know, I, I no longer, no longer trade or whatever, you know, else life throws at you, you know, you never know what's, what's around the corner. So, yeah. So I have a question about, it's related to the community thing. Mm. And so I know from being in the community, watching you, you've done work with a smaller group of traders. Yeah. Like you've done some collaborative work and I, you know, I, you don't have to go into the details about what you guys found, but I want to talk about that process because it's something that I encourage a lot of the guys that I work with, you work with each other. So what has working with others and doing that collaboration, collaboration with smaller group, what has that meant for you and your trading and your development? Like how, how, did, how did that get started? Like, what do you have to say about that aspect, that topic? I think it's, I think it's important to to get the right group because I've been part of small groups before and they don't work mainly because you know the mix of people that are in there you have to get the right mix of people. Yeah. Unfortunately now um you know maybe 10 months, 11 months into it, I found the right group of people who all have the same direction, who all trade the same way, who all have the same vision, who are all aligned with M7's teachings. And that's the most important part yeah. because I think sometimes when you can get in a group where the dynamics are, let's say in different directions, mm -hmm. it can become very confusing. It can become troublesome and it can take you away from actual goals of what um what we're set here to do like i was in a group right at the beginning who were more interested in bot trading and creating a automatic dr trading bot rather than back testing and doing it the correct way and you know wh whatever you know if that's what they want to do that's cool and i don't have a problem with it because you know i don't like i said before i don't have problems with how people want to trade if bot trading is how they want to do it and they can automate it and automate it in a way that's profitable for them then kudos to them that's that's cool i'm, I'm all down for that but it didn't align with what 
I was there for within the academy and I felt I was getting sidetracked away. So I think it's important to get the right dynamics of people and the group that I have, we, we, we have strict rules and the rules are you show up in the morning and if you don't show up and you've not got a reason, there's a warning. And if you don't show up the second time, you're out of the group. It's as simple as that. And it's, it's, it's funny really, because we don't, we didn't really have to put that rule in for the people that are in because we're all, we're all aligned in the same way. It's quite, it's quite beautiful really. Um, because you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm in the UK, but we have what we call the roll call at 5am. So it's 5am New York time. So I'm thinking, listen, if two of the guys can get up at 5am, I'm showing up for this because it's yeah. nine, 10 o'clock in the UK. I've got no reason to not show up. Yeah. And it almost spurs you on to, to, to understand, you know, that people are sacrificing their time to come on to try and better your, your skill set and try and, you know, improve what you're doing on a daily basis. And so the dynamic of the group, I would say, is, is important. And I'm fortunate enough now to be in that dynamic where everybody puts in the work and we're all on the same page. And we start off with planning out the morning session, what we're expecting to happen. You know, if this happens, then what's plan B? And then expectations for the afternoon when, well, I call it afternoon when, when New York opens in the morning, your time. Um and mapping out the day so it's almost like we're walking the charts first Mm -hmm. a little bit like you would imagine um, i remember watching a documentary once on tiger woods and he he was talking about how he visualizes walking the golf course prior to actually playing the course so the night before he'll do he'll play the game in his head over and over again um so when he actually gets on the course it's almost like you don't have to think you just play and that's kind of the way that we do it with this. It's kind of like, we don't have to think. We know where the levels are going to be and what we want to see is high probability. If that happens, press the button and away you go. There's no thought process behind it. So it takes away that um, that element of stress to have to try and plan. And if it doesn't happen and it doesn't work out in a way that we're expecting and it's not falling within a plan B and we just don't trade it. It's just, it's just walk away from the charts. It's time to cut grass time. So it, it's been, it's been useful because it's, it's had a dynamic set of skills from people that are coders, people that are institutionally within the financial world. So they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge on that. Um, to traders who have been trading for many, many years. So th- there's a lot of there's a lot of different dynamics within the group. So it works really well. So yeah, I would, I'd encourage I'd encourage anyone to to get within that small faction of of people because, listen, the the MSC chat that we have, which you're part of, it's good. Don't get me wrong, but it can be very noisy, and it yeah, can be very. very much so everyone's got their own ways of trading and it might not necessarily fall in line with what you're trying to do. So it can become very confusing. And I think when you've got, you know, over five, six, 800 people in there, I don't know how many is in there, all trying to give you their opinions on what's going on. It's, it's not the best. And I'm not trying to be negative by saying that, but you've got to really, you know, you've got to not be delusional with the fact that it's going to be difficult if you've got 800 voices all, all trying to, all trying to talk to you and tell you, you know, what they think is right. So I think, you know, if you're going to get into a group um, that's small enough where you're all aligned in the same way, it's it's only going to be beneficial. And the other good thing as well is you can become accountable to someone. I think that's important as well is to be accountable to um, to people that are within uh, within within the trading circle. Like I can be accountable to my partner, but she doesn't trade, so she doesn't get it. Uh, yeah. And, you know, she'll ask me at the end of the day, how do I get on? And, you know, it, it doesn't really mean anything in terms of, you know, her answers. And that's not m- meant in a bad way. But, you know, when you're accountable to people that are within the group and you've already planned out your trades, if you do something against that, it's almost like, John, what the fuck are you doing? You know better yeah. than that. Don't do it next time, you <laughs> dick. They call you out. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And, 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 that, and that's really good because um, that's one thing that I, I can struggle with quite badly is, is, is over trading to a point where if I do really well, I can become really cocky and it's almost like I feel like Superman and I'm, I'm invincible. And I'm sure everybody's been through through that that stage of you know, doing really well, and then it's almost like 
it's almost like the charts are coming out at you in 3D and you're seeing trades that are happening, but which necessarily aren't happening. And, you know, before you know it, you've taken three or four losses and you're like, shit, that's not cool. Um, and then you try and keep going because, you know, you think you're, you think you're able to, to take, take the winnings back and it just doesn't, doesn't work. So another good reason to be in a group is, is for that, but it's only good if you're, if you're giving them the right information, if you're lying and, and obviously not truthful, then it kind of doesn't serve a purpose. But, you know, I've I've accepted that this is what I want to do as a job. So it kind of doesn't make sense to lie. If I'm taking a trade that doesn't make sense and I didn't post it, like it doesn't doesn't serve me well to do that because ultimately all I'm doing is lying to myself. So, yeah, I think there's something uh, really powerful, too, about the aspect of you're going through a more shared experience with a group of people that, you know, like I've heard over and over again from traders, man, this is really lonely. You know, like I don't have anybody to talk to, like when I'm having a crappy day, like I can't talk to my spouse or my partner or, or whomever, right. They yeah. just don't get it. And so, you know, the fact that aside from the fact that these are traders who struggle with a lot of the same things, the mindset and other things, the fact that you're also aligned and how you trade looking for similar entries and where you're going to, you know, uh, manage your risk and those kinds of things can be super supportive, not only do you have the accountability partner that will call you out afterwards, but you also know, Hey, you know, three other guys are taking the same trade. Like I, yeah. you know, it kind of helps to boost the confidence a little bit too. You've done the work. You're all kind of taking the trade. You're all going to have the shared experience, right? Yeah. There's comfort in that. In yeah. hundred percent. And, and you're right. It is like, even, even though I'm part of the group, it is lonely. Um, like my, my day, my day job. Um, I mean, I, I'm ex, I'm an ex sales general sales manager for Audi UK. Um, so the, the car manufacturer Audi. Yeah. Um, so I'm used to being around people and I'm used to having a team of people around me where I'm, you know, if I'm having a crap day, I know who to go and speak to, you know, if I'm, if I need to vent, you know, I know who that person would be or, you know, it, it, you're always interacting with people and for do, and, and doing that for so long. And then obviously being part of the police where, you know, when you're in, in the community, you're always involved with talking to people, whether it's your your sergeant, whether it's your, your your partner, whether it's the members of the public, you're always interacting with someone and there's always somebody to speak to. So if I was having a crap day, you kind of vent it in a in a in a in a manual way because you know that you're gonna get to speak to someone and it kind of alleviates that problem. So to go from that for so many years to then just being on my own all day. And it is literally you versus you and you can get in your head so easily. Um, you have to really be headstrong with it. And that's something that I, I knew I needed to work on and I will need to carry on working on more than the gym. Like the gym, the gym has been part of my life for such a long time and I've done it for many, many years and I, and I love it and I love going, but I've come to the realization now that working on my mindset is a lot more important now than the physical aspects of going to the gym. So I always make that a priority every single day. And I don't do anything until that part of my day is done because I know how much of an impact it's going to have, not only on performance, but focus, you know, the results, how I'm going to feel at the end of the day, you know, if I don't take a winning trade, you know, all these things I need to recognize are going to be the main things that are going to keep me in the longevity of trading because when I first started trading, I genuinely thought that people would be, would start and would finish because they've run out of money or they've blown their account. I don't believe that's true now. I think a lot of people don't do it because their mind gives up and I think it becomes too much and I think it becomes too much of a, um, you know, too much of a burden and it, it and I get it and I, and I can completely understand it because there's been so many times where I've wanted to quit. There's been yeah. so many times where I've stared and I've looked at the charts and I've just burst into tears be, and, and not knowing why I've done that other than through sheer frustration. I knew that it was important that if I was to carry on within, within trading, how much I needed to work on that. And I still do. Like I still, I get through one thing and I think, oh, I've conquered that. And then something else comes and I think, oh my God, there's something else I've got to deal with now. And then you get through that and then something else comes along and I'm like, oh my God, this is like never ending. But I think the more you go through those processes, the more you realize you can get through them. So that first bit that I always used to struggle was with, with losing. I couldn't, I couldn't face losing. It mm -hmm. was a really big problem for me. And then I overcame that issue 
and something else came along then and then something else. But I, the more that that happens, the more I think, but, and I can look back and go, John, you know, do you remember when you had an issue losing? Well, you got through that. Then do you remember when you were going through this problem? Well, you got through that as well. So this is going to be no different. So I think as much as sometimes we can use that side of things to be a negative thing, we can also use it as as a plus as well to, yeah. to recognize that actually those failures can make you stronger and also can make you realize that if you can get through them, then everything else is, you know, is, is plain sailing from there. That's one of the things that I, I, I try and work on every single day. And it's difficult. Like, don't get me wrong. Like it's really hard and it's not, it's not something that's going to, you know, going to, so, going to solve itself overnight. And I think anyone who's got those expectations of, a quick fix. It's almost like those people that want to lose weight fast. Yeah. You know, it might it might work for three or four weeks, but as soon as you stop, you're going to balloon the weight back on again. It's, so it's almost like a temporary fix. Yeah. Um, you know, anyone that wants to get in decent shape, anyone that wants that that longevity of a good physique, it's going to take time to work on that, and it takes many many years. And the mind is no different. So if you've got that that mentality, and it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit to the let's say the hypothetical fat side, then, you know, you, there's no quick fixes for it. You've got to just really work at it and, and have that, that continuity and keep showing up every day and keep doing the reps. That's the most important thing is, you know, is keep giving, giving it your all and not giving up. Yeah. I love that. I do a lot of mindset coaching as part of the coaching work I do. And one of the first things I tell people, you know, I'll ask them like, well, how old are you? And usually it's like, I'm 30, I'm 35, 40, whatever. <laughs> And I'll tell them, I'm like, well, listen, you've got, you know, 35 years of thinking in the same way. You know, that's the baggage that you have to learn how to change. And, you know, 35 years of this and it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week. Like it takes no. time. No. You know, just like if you let your body go for 35 years, like you're not going to overnight, you know, look like you. Right. It's going to take that time and effort and that you know, that 1% everyday improvement that's yeah. going to work. And I think we, we tend to discount on the mindset side. We discount how hard it is to, uh, to work through those things. Cause we think, Oh, it's just changing my mind. Like I can just, I can do that. I can read a book. I can watch a YouTube video. And, yeah. and unfortunately it's not, it isn't that easy as you, as you've come to find out as well. Right. No. And, and you know, the, the, the correlate, the correlation between trading and going to the gym couldn't be further apart, but they're very similar in the same respect as well, because you need that same mentality. You need that same, that same drive and you need that same understanding that like, exactly like you said, like I, I've heard over the years, so many people have said to me, Oh, John, you know, I've been going to the gym now for, for six weeks and uh, I'm not looking any different. And I'm like, how many years of, of bad habits have you had Yeah, right. You know, with, with, with your diet? And how many, how many, how many, years have you not trained for and you're telling me after six weeks you, 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 you're down and you, you, you're depressed because you're not changing like for fuck's sake seriously you know that and that's the same approach that people take with with trading it's almost yeah. like and, and mindset you know if you've got a really unhealthy mindset um, it's not going to change overnight you've got to really work at it and I think that's the pro that's the, the problem that most people have they don't want to put the time and, and effort in and unfortunately anything that's worth getting uh, it's not easy. And, you know, at the end of the day, if if having a great physique was easy, everyone would be walking around like a Greek god and they're not. You know, if trading was easy, we'd all be we'd all be millionaires by now and we're not. And, and it's it's not for everyone. And I get that. But, you know, it, it's not something that that can be taken lightly. And you've got to really, really work at it. And one of the other things as well that that um, that I can relate to sort of tra gym training and trading is this victim mentality that people seem to have. And for me, mm. that, that, that is only excuses um, that people make is that, you know, that victim sort of side of things that people say, Oh, you know, this shit's happened to me or that stuff's happened to me. And I'm like, man, you know, <laughs> you don't know the half of it, but you know, I'm not here to try and say to people, you know, those things didn't happen, nor do you need to forget your past. But there has to come a point where you have a choice and you can either, and I've said this so many times, I say it on the stage all the time, that you can either argue for your limitations or you can make a plan to succeed despite the challenges that you've had in your life. And, you know, we as people can either choose to let those circumstances define us forever 
or we can choose to use them as fuel and determination to succeed, de- depending on what it is. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's trading, whether it's opening a business, it doesn't matter. We c- it, you can relate it to everything in life. Not to generalize in terms of putting people in a, you know, successful people in a pigeonhole, but you'll find that the, ma- the majority of those that are successful, so, you know, the Jeff Bezos of the world, the Elon Musk, you know, even right down to, you know, our mentor in the Academy M7, the truly successful people started with nothing and they struggled the way to success. And, you know, these nine times out of 10 successful people didn't fall out the sky. They fucking worked to get to where they want to be. And I can assure you that every single one of their stories will be very, very similar. And they worked harder than the majority. They kept going when the majority of people, you know, gave up and they suffered through failure and made sure that that wasn't the end. It was just rather a lesson. And, ultimately went through hell, but was always focused on this, on the end goal. And that's what I always tell myself, like I've been through all this and I'm still going through it. Like I, I tend to find that I do work harder than a lot of people. And I do keep going when others give up. And I've had so many failures in the last 16 months, but I know where my focus is and it's on that end goal. And I think very small, you know, there's a very small percentage of people that can understand that, you know, sadly, most people would rather argue for those limitations rather than know that literally there are no limitations. It's just in your head. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's just in your head. (laughs) That's, I encounter that over and over and over again. In fact, you know, you mentioned something interesting, right? Which is that, you know, like people have these circumstances and half the time when I'm talking to people, to other traders, it's not a circumstance. It's just their story about what happened. And we like to make up these stories about what happened. And if we have that victim story, we're never going to progress, right? We're not going to get through that. If we can look at what's actually happening more objectively and then kind of decide how we want to think about it, we, we have the ability to change our story. The, you know, people think, well, this happened to me in the past. Well, no, that's, that's probably your perception. That's just your story about what happened. Like what else could be true? And, and we don't, we don't tend to ask ourselves, you know, those kinds of questions. I love what you said too, about failing. In fact, um, if I can bring it up here, I just want to bring up your Twitter account, by the way, you guys can start asking questions because we can get to, we can get to some questions. I want to ask this question about, or I want to bring up, I gotta, I gotta pick the right, um, the right oh screen. God. Hang on. Oh God. Yeah, I dread it. I dread when you get off me. <laughs> I got the right screen. I got your Twitter. Hang on. <laughs> I can't share the screen. I can't share the screen and talk at the same time. Oh, it's, it's, not, it's all right because um, I, I've got the other screen open so I can see what you're showing. Yeah. So let me, let me just, uh, re- let me just read this again. Scared of failing. That's the easy part. The real terror being on your deathbed, staring at the ceiling, knowing you were too cowardly to chase the greatest version of yourself. Don't let that be your finale. Go big or regret it forever. One of the reasons I love that so much, John, is because recently I've had a number of discussions with a number of traders. And and it's like a lot of times when I coach, it's amazing because like I'll have a period of time where like everybody's struggling with like this one thing. Failure has been one of the topics of the last couple of weeks. And, you know, we think of failure, you know, as when we're not getting the outcomes that we want, we think of that as being failure, but you fundamentally identify what I think is the best definition of failure here, which is, which is quitting before you've even started. Yeah. Right. I mean, you talk about like, Hey, I went through all this failure in the last 16 months. Would you really classify that as failure? Honestly? At the start. Yeah. Yeah. But I think as as you go on through the months, maybe, and again, this is just maturing with that mindset, right? So it's just understanding that actually they're not failures, they're just ways to learn and to be better. But at the start, yeah, I I used to have this really terrible ideology that I was a complete failure. I couldn't grasp trading. I was stupid. And, And this all stems from, again, that it, and it is kind of like a victim mentality. And, and that was something that I needed to address very, very quickly because for me, I'm not academically strong, never have been. And I'm not, I'm not saying that in a negative or not, in a, in a, I'm not downgrading myself. It's, it's realistic. So I've never been a academic person. 
you know, academics was something that I just wasn't interested in. I left high school and that was it. And as far as I was concerned, my life had just completely got better because I didn't no longer had to go to school anymore because I hated it. So <laughs> academics was never something that I could, I could gel to. And I think it was because I wasn't good at it. So because if I'm not good at something, it, I think, you know, that always has um, yeah, sure. an, an impact on, on your focus as well. So in terms of how I was last year, I always used, I like, I look back and go, you know, oh my God, like, why didn't I pay more attention at school? Or why wasn't I, why am I not more clever? Why can't I understand this like that person's understanding it? And I used to associate those down failure with failures. And they weren't, they were just, now I just recognize that I've just got to put in more work. I've just got to yeah. work maybe harder than what somebody else has to. And that's just a part of life. And that's just a part of anything. That's not just related to trading. That's, that's, with every aspect because there's people that train in the gym that train the same amount of time that I have that look better than I do. Is that me? Am I, am, have I failed at that? No, it's just, that's a part of life. There'll always be somebody that will either get something or be better than you at something. During the part of 2023, I would say mid 23, it, it was classed as failure for me. And that was a real problem because it had a really, hard impact on my mentality but as as the months have gone on and the strength that, that has come along with it and understanding things more they're they're just lessons that that, that i've learned from and yeah. one of the biggest lessons that i had was in november november was a really tough month for me because i had uh three weeks worth of lo losses i had 15 mm. straight days trading days of losses which accounts to three weeks yeah. couldn't take a winning trade monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday loss weekend come monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday loss and man did that fucking that 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 was hard that was so so difficult but now I look back at it and I think that was just something that I needed to go through because now I'm at the point of where I don't care if I lose. Um, so it was, it was, that was something that I can definitely say was a lesson that has impacted the way I am now. So as much as I probably looked at that back then and thought that that was a failure, it, it isn't, it, it was, it was something that's made me stronger because now I've been through that and I didn't lose my account. Um, and I've got it all back. So to me, that's, that's a positive. And I can look at that and think, well, actually, you know, you've been through probably the hardest thing that anyone's going to have to go through. And especially yeah. doing it full time as well, where I'm having to be at the charts every single day. Can you imagine yeah. after, after 10 days of losses, yeah, right. to <laughs> still go through that routine of getting up every morning and still wanting to sit at the charts, but I still did it. John, and, John, I feel you, man. <laughs> I feel you, man. I know, I know what it's like. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, that's hard. But you know, it, it's it's just lessons that that need to happen, and unfortunately, some of the times, some lessons are harder that, to face than others. That's just that's just part of part of life, and it's yeah. not just it's not just attributed to you know to trading. It's it's with any any skill that you're learning. And, you know, M7 says this all the time, you know, would you expect to, to start boxing and then six months later want to step into the ring with Mike Tyson? Um, probably not. You'd want to probably train a little bit longer than six months. But that expectation of I'm ready to get in the ring with Mike Tyson is similar to, right, I started trading now, I should be profitable after six months. And if I'm not, why? What's great about that is that you had a mentor that was helping to set your expectations. And I think that's where a lot yeah. of the failure mindset comes from. Like anybody who's listening to this, like if you're, if you're struggling with failure, ask yourself, am I really failing or do I have expectations and I'm not meeting the expectations? Maybe your expectations are wrong, right? So like just what you said, like you had a mentor that's saying, look, like you need to give this time. Like this is going to take, this is how much time it's going to take. When you can reset your expectations, you realize, Hey, this is the journey I'm on. These are the, these are expected. It's expected that I'm not going to get the outcomes that I want every single week. It's expected yep. that I might have a drawdown period. It's expected that I'm going to struggle with my mindset. And if you go into this with, with different expectations, your perception of failure might be a little bit different. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think the other thing as well is because obviously trading is, is monetary related. So we're here to make money, right? At the end of the day, yeah. but people focus on that too much and that's where the problems come in. Yeah. And for me, um, it was just having someone drone into me every single week 
performance over result, performance over result, because the more you perform and the better you perform, the better the results will happen. Um, so for me, like, you know, a losing day now, it isn't a bad day. If I perform well, if I did everything yes. ba- based on my, my trading plan, and everything that was highest probability for that particular setup, if it didn't work out, then it doesn't matter because the performance is still high. The result just wasn't meant to be. And, you know, I, I know uh, I know a lot of professional sports players have that same mentality. And that's that's something that, you know, I would always encourage people to to go and and to think about more is, is the performance over the results. Because when you're attached to money, the emotions are too much. And that's when you can start making mistakes. And that's when you start to go off the rails a little bit. When you focus on the performance aspect of it, the results kind of follow. And that's what, you know, that's what I'm finding now to be, you know, more more prevalent than ever. I just got to continue with that. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I had to learn, especially from, you know, from M7, you know, and he's, he's batted my head a few times. Like we've had a few conversations one-on-one. I'm quite fortunate enough to, to get his one-on-one time sometimes when I need it. And I will never forget the 26th of May of last year was literally make or break. It was like, John, you need to sort your shit out or you really need to make a decision on whether you stay in the academy or not. And it wasn't him saying, if you don't do this, you're getting kicked out. It was almost like, if yeah. you don't, if you don't sort out this this mentality that you've got, you're not going to last. So you might as well just quit now. And thankfully, yeah, I, I, I took the I took the right path, and I took the path that he wanted me to take. Um, but I'll never forget that that conversation. And we've had numerous conversations since then. And you know, he does it does help massively. You know, I, I do have you know great great people within the academy who I'm really, really close to, um, who I would now consider friends. And that's one of the other things that I love about this as well is like, it's not just about the trading, it's the friendships that I've forged as well. There's a few guys in that I speak to every single day and I speak to them more than I speak to my own family. Um, <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Like I, I, sp- I speak to one guy and he's he's like my best friend. Like, you know, yeah. I've, never, I've never met the guy, but... It's like we have this 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 friendship now that's that's been forged through trading over over the internet, and it's really really peculiar. But I speak to him more than I speak to my best mate, and I know I can tell him things without him judging, and I yeah. and I know he can tell me. And it, it's an amazing it's an amazing community to be part of because you know how how great would it be to be able to visit that person where he lives and vice versa, and you know see all these amazing people that you've that you've been on this journey with. So yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's good. Yeah. I love it. So I just want to ask, so I actually titled this as what, what did I say? Like finding the highest probability setups with data. And so it's probably worth us having a little bit of a discussion about what, what is this trading approach? Cause it really is something that's different. I know you came into this like 15 months ago. I've been in the trading community for a number of years and this is different. This is not like anything else I've ever seen, anything else I've ever traded. I love it. You know, I've completely switched over. I'm 100% trading DR, IDR stuff and principles. I think we should probably talk a little bit about it. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, might, it might make sense to maybe explain. So when you tell people what this is, like, how do you tend to describe it? So the way the way that we're trading um, is using historical data based on the last fifteen years worth of of collected data in terms of retracements, extensions, timings, so it's time time and price retracement data, that sort of thing. So we're able to say with high probability um, where a certain a certain price level is going to be within a certain time on a certain situation. So, for example, we use um, the DR, which is the defining range. Now, one of the biggest bugbears that I have is a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's just a breakout. It's just a breakout uh, system and how you trade is no different to, to that. And whilst I understand why people might think that, especially with M7's original YouTube videos, there's a hell of a lot more to it. Um, so I understand it's the breakout hour. So I, I get that. But within that, within that structure of the defining range, we have data points that say at this particular time, this is where this, you know, price is highest probability to retrace before it extends. And that's, that's what we're trading. We're trading historic data. So everything's data related. It's not, 
it, it's not anything that I would imagine retail traders have used before. Like, obviously, I'm quite new to the space, but from what I've seen in the past, like, I know there's the certain concept that use historic data, that systems to take trades, but this, I think, is is the only thing where it's purely based on on data and, and nothing else. No, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know how I would explain it any, any way else. And you almost kind of have to see this stuff and see what the data says, you know, and what it's telling you and then how to, how to read the data before you actually kind of get it and understand it. But um, I've had this conversation on Reddit before um, because, you know, people are like, oh, this is just exactly what you said. Oh, this is, this is like ICT or this is like this. And it's just, just this simple thing. And it is a misunderstanding from his original videos. And, yeah. and the, you know, one of the things that I love about this is it's the time part. It's been probably one of the things that has been one of the biggest impacts on me and the way that I trade. Because anyone who's traded anything else can relate to the idea that you've got levels. And a lot of times you've got all the right levels and you know the direction of the trade. And so you're waiting for that level to come through and Maybe you get in when that level hits, but then maybe it kind of pops up past the level and you, you end up getting taken out and then it goes in your direction. Like what the heck happened? There's a timing component that you cannot ignore. And so the time part of the data, I think, is extremely powerful because it, it helps us to figure out not just where to get in, but when to get in and when to get out potentially as well. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you found the same thing in relative to the time component. I mean, this is all, was all kind of new to you. So for you, this was kind of your first whole experience coming in here and you don't have anything to compare it to. But for me, the time thing was incredibly helpful. Yeah. I mean, obviously bread and butter for, for DR trade in his time and price, um, you know, with other things in the mix in terms of transitional trades, when certain models within defining ranges of each session are broken. Um, but that's that's where the hard work comes into it because there is an argument to say that's more discretional. But purely trading the data, there is a level of discretion to a degree because what I might find as a retracement cluster might not be the same that you might look at. Mm-hmm. But from a time element, you know, that's undeniably not going to be any different. That's that's fixed and is is laid laid to the ground. So we can never get that wrong. So yeah, I agree with the time element is 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 an important factor. Where we were using lens last year, which is our data database for determining these retracement clusters and timings. We now have Quantex, which is, if you imagine, I don't know, maybe lens being that. Uh, can, I can I show that? Does M7, does M7 show that in any of his YouTube videos? I don't want to show it if like it's not. Uh, yes, he does. Yeah. So um, it would probably okay if I, if I showed it really quick. Cause I so, think it's, I think it's really powerful to see. Yeah, so lens is lens is like your your high end car, um, you know. I don't know Audi, BMW, but then Quantex is that next level, and that's your supercar. You know, that's that's really drilling down into what you can have as as granular data. You can change the timings from thirty minute buckets to five to fifteen. Um, you know, you, you can go as granular as you as you want. Um, it, it's just next level, and this this is only version one of Quantex that you're showing now, but yeah. this is going to incorporate a machine learning aspect to trading as well, which yeah. is super exciting. And M7's already started showing us that that machine learning part of how Quantex will deliver the data. Uh, but yeah, that, that just gives you a very, um, you know, without going into too much detail, because I, I don't know what, what he shows and what he doesn't, but there you've got what asset you're trading, the confirmation mm-hmm. direction of the defining range, mm-hmm. what day it is, whether it was a short confirmation or a true, the time that that happened. And then this gives you those probabilities of where you're expected the price to extend. So it's max extension. How many data sets you've got to compare that against in terms of how many how many historic times has that happened? You've then got your M7 retracements and max retracements. So those are your clusters that we were talking about. Yeah. The bottom left is your timings. So if you if you look at that, there is a high cutoff point at 11. So, you know, this is where we look at it as DR traders and say, okay, if prices are lining within a cluster at that time, there's a high probability that that's the retracement done for the day. Yeah. Um, we've got high, you know, a very good chance that 
the short aspirations will, will come in. And as long as it matches the extension target and we've still got room to extend to that, then it's a high probability trade. And and literally that's just the basics of, of yeah. using this system. There's a, there's a lot more to it. You know, you can't, you can't just come in and expect after sort of two or three months to be really good at this. It's taken a hell of a long time for, you know, for, for <laughs> there's a ton of data. <laughs> and, and because of that, there's so many different, like you said before, like there there's, when you get into some of these uh, kind of different parts of the chat, you do get lots of different perspectives about, Hey, I think it's going this way or that, or coming back to here or there or going there. And so it's because you're, you're learning how to interpret this data but the data is, is extremely powerful. And when you like, I, I know, I already know what you're, you know, how you progressed, um, because it's the same answer for everyone who's in the Academy, but do you just want to explain how do you get to the point where you start from here and where now you're actually taking consistently successful trades? What, what was you, know, you just got to put, you just got to put the hours in. I've, I've probably yeah. accumulated over 3000 worth of hours, um, since I've been, since I've been doing this and that's probably not enough. I'd probably need to do 10,000. So I'm still 7,000 short, but <laughs> yeah. showing up every day and doing the same thing every single day. And it's repetitive and it can be boring, but <laughs> going to the gym is repetitive and boring, but we feel good about it because we can see the change in, in the way that we look. So trading is the same. It's repetitive. It's boring, but ultimately it's going to give us that, um, you know, that end goal at the end, which is, I don't know, it's different for everyone, but ultimately to have freedom and, and, and money where you don't have to have a boss to, um, you know, to, to respond to every day. So, you know, it, it's just, you have to, you have to put the hours in and you have to put the time in. And it's like, it's like with anything in the world, that you're ever trying to do. If you're learning a new skill, you've got to put the hours in. It's like, you know, if you want to learn an instrument, you're not just going to pick up an instrument and start playing it and expect to be good after a couple of yeah. hours. Learning a new language, you know, you can't expect to be fluent after a couple of months. I'm sure there might be people or someone in the world that can because they're clever like that, but I'm talking generalistic. Um, and this is, this is the same, you know, you can't expect to look at that data and expect to be able to read it in a proficient way after a couple of months, you know, you have to put the hours in and the back testing is so crucial. Like it's, it's so important Like on my metrics, metrics only started. Um, I can't remember when we got introduced to metrics. I think it might've been September of last year. Maybe yeah, just for everybody. Metrics is a tool that's part of the community that allows you to put your back tests in yes. and then allow you to analyze it. So, so I, I, so I'd done a lot of back tests prior to that, but yeah. You know, even my metrics from October still showing a thousand back tests. Yeah. Um, and I haven't put the others in cause I can't transfer them over. So, you know, I've done, I've done a lot of back testing and I probably still need to do more and I still do, I still do do it. And I'm never, I'm never going to stop doing that because I think there's still an important element of learning, even, you know, to a degree of after 20 years, you know, M7 still looks at back testing and still re-engineers, you know, his trades. So if he's doing that after 20 years, you know, what makes me think that I shouldn't be doing it after, after yeah. 14 or 16 months. This is, this is really huge. Like just uh, regardless of, and you, I, I think you mentioned this earlier and I think this is worth calling out. You said like, there's lots of different ways to trade. There's, it's one of the draws to trading for people is that there's, it's the ultimate playground for creativity. You can come up with virtually any set of rules and probably find a way to actually make them successful. But the way to make them successful is this work. It's the back test work. It's the, it's the measuring, it's the analyzing, it's the looking at the data. And I don't mean the data that we showed. I mean, like when you're looking at your back test data, trying to, you know, find the right filters that filter out the bad trades, but allow you to keep a lot of the good trades. That's a lot of work. And most of us um, in the community who've been around for any amount of time, probably literally have thousands of back tests <laughs> that, that yeah. we've done. And I still back test really heavily. I'm, I'm spending at least a couple hours a day, usually back testing, um, because I'm continuing to develop and filter and kind of improve, um, improve, you know, kind of my approaches. So I, I just think that's worth a call out that, you know, that this is the work that's involved. And it's, you know, we talked earlier about the mindset work. This is the actual skill work and you cannot skip either one of these things. You can't skip the mindset work. You can't skip the skill work either. They're absolutely crucial for success. And I, and it's really, it can be really difficult and, and I get it. And 
you know, you've just got to really keep focused on on that end goal and understand that you've got to put the work in in order to reap the rewards. And you know, none of this is going to be going to be gifted to us. Um, you know, we're we're given really amazing tools within the academy, an amazing teaching platform. Um, you know, we get lives where even I can follow, and you know, I, I look at it as academic, but I really enjoy the lives. Like I've never missed one live. I think the, you know, I tell a lie. Sorry, I was having an MRI scan at the time, so I couldn't, I couldn't, <laughs> li- I couldn't listen to the live. So what? I think you can let, let me off for that. But that's the ty- that's what that's what you need to do. And, and I can hand on heart tell you, since we started the academy, I have not missed a single live that's, other than that that's time. Amazing. And we have them three times a week um, yeah. with M7, and I've not missed a single one. And I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet, but these are the things that you got to do. You just got to show up. Yeah. And if I didn't, you know, if I didn't show up to half of these, and I didn't do my back testing, and I didn't put the hours in, how can I then look at it and moan about what's what the results are? Because you know, I, I wouldn't have the right to do that. And I think that's the difficulty that some people are facing coming into the academy now it's quite overwhelming and it there's there's a lot of content and there's a lot of material to get through but i think the problem is people try and skip steps because they want to get to that end bit or they want to catch up to where we are now because that's another another point that needs to be brought up like within within the chat side of things on discord people are posting the charts and the trades every single day and i think you know from somebody coming in new they can look at that and go oh my god like what do i need to do to do that and they probably skip there's probably 10 steps and they skip the first five and then start on on yeah. on step five and then wonder why why they can't do it and it's really really important that if you come, you're going to come in you just start at the beginning as as tough as it is you just got to start right at the start and and work your way through and eventually it'll pay off and trust me like i again this is not down down downgrading myself but if i can if i can do it and get to where i am today and i've still got a long way to go like there's so there's, there's so much more i need to do but if i can do what i'm doing currently then anybody can and you know that's 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 a given because i'm not I'm not a clever person. I'm a very visual person. I have to have visuals. So I'm almost like, you know, that that person that, that I can't, don't get me wrong, I can read. So I'm not saying I can't read. But <laughs> I'm wondering, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> if, if, you, if you're, if you're, gonna, if you're going to compare it to something, it's like that person that reads cartoons or yeah. a picture book would, would benefit more from somebody that would be reading. That That's me. I'm a very, very I, I have to have visuals and if I've got that visual, my memory can retain that information a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, but my point that I'm trying to make is that, you know, that if, if I can come into this academy and get to the stage of where I'm at now, and I've got a hell of a long way to go, then, you know, anybody can do it. They've just got to give themselves the time and they've got to invest in themselves and give themselves that, that allowance to get to that stage and not just think that this is going to be a fast track to, to making profits. It's not... Yeah. Yeah. I think that's been kind of a consistent thing, you know, that I've heard, you know, from the traders who are making it, the traders who are actually, actually making it work. It's setting the reasonable expectations, right. Working through the challenges and obstacles that come in the way and, and put in, putting in the work, you know, just putting in the work. And I think those are just key things that we have to remember day in and day out, even when it gets really, really rough. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent, and it gets rough for everybody. But at the same time, you know, you've got to just understand that that's just part of the part of the process that yeah. you've got to go through as traders. But like I said, and I'll keep saying till till the, the day's end that we are very, very fortunate to be in the position that we're in within the DR Academy because. I don't care what anybody says. They might say I'm biased. They might say, well, you know, I don't really have any experience outside of it. I don't need it to understand that we've got a great mentor who cares and gives a shit. Um, And that's so important to to have that backing and that person that gives you that um, that level of um, attention um, you know, on a weekly basis. And, you know, th- this guy doesn't need to show up three times a week. Um, doesn't need to be spending the hours that he does to try and develop the systems that we have. You know, um, I'm sure people within his world thinks he's crazy for doing it. You know, why Why would somebody who's coming out of an institution want to go and trade a lot of mushrooms, how to trade, and spend the last 16 yeah. months of his life just stuck in a you know stuck in his uh, dubai apartment you know t- teaching people how to how to trade but that that 
to me, I'll always be thankful for and I'll always be, you know, I'll always appreciate that because we are very fortunate that we, that we have that as well as the other things that come with it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, anybody who's who's not not in the academy, and I'm not trying to plug it because <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a paying student. Like, I, I pay like everybody else. But, yeah. you know, if you're really serious about wanting to trade and, you know, you, you've paid, you know, upteen amounts of gurus to trade, teach you how to trade and you've still not got there, then I urge anybody to to have a look into the academy and, and see what it's all about. And even just to have a look at the the, the free YouTube videos that, that are on there gives you an idea. But like I said, the YouTube videos can be quite deceptive in a way because it just looks like it's trading defining ranges, which yeah, it is, but there's a lot more to it than that. And, um, you know, we, we have a lot more lot more arsenal to uh, to help us trade with and and data being being the most important so so yeah yeah neither one of us are affiliates there's no affiliate program <laughs> so no. like well, that's the crazy that's the crazy thing right here. Like, <laughs> people say oh like john you, you pay by m7 to say the stuff that you say and i get yeah. dms of people saying you know what what what's you know, what's the affiliate program like and you know people being sarcastic by it and i just say listen i like, am just a regular guy that was a, a, a car sales manager 16 months ago that didn't have a fucking clue about trading. And I stumbled upon a YouTube video with this German guy that sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> he does. talking about trading. And, yeah. and for those that don't know, like I'd listened to ICT videos prior to that. So I had actually thought mm-hmm. because my, to, to put it into context, my brother-in-law started trading back in September of last year. So it was something that I knew was happening, but I didn't quite understand what was going on. So someone mentioned ICT. So I looked at one of the videos and please, you know, don't, for those that are listening, if they find this offensive, whatever, I'm telling you the truth. I would use that as a sleep story as opposed to trying to utilize that to try and learn from because yeah. I think <laughs> you could condense a lot of what was said into 10 minutes, I suppose, yes. to two hours worth of ranting. And I'm just like, oh my God, if this is what trading's like, it's not for me. Yeah. And then I stumble upon the, this this YouTube video, M7 starts talking. And, and genuinely, this is, again, I'm only being genuine. Three hours into it, I'm still watching it because I'm yeah. engrossed by it. But I haven't a clue what the fuck's going on because I've never traded before. But I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like how he's showing this, this is fucking easy. Yeah. Um, and if this is what trading's like, and then all of a sudden from that, became the announcement of, listen, we're, we're starting an, an academy and, you know, do you want to be part of it kind of thing? And that was, that was it. History's, you know, been written and the rest of it doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. But yeah, like I said, we're fortunate with that because I think that's important as well is like, maybe people will, will comment on how the delivery of the content is throughout the academy, but you've got to understand why like, this is the first time the DR Academy has ever been, you know, was ever was ever made last year you know there wasn't one prior to it it was almost like it was like a trial and error what what would work what wouldn't work and you know you've got to yes it was people don't people still don't understand that to this day that he'd never done this before so as much as it was almost like he was going into the teaching world as much as i was going into the training world it was all new to him and, and to the team so there needed to be that element of trial and error but the all that aside the delivery of the lives and how he teaches on the live is is so self-explanatory. Like it's just the easiest thing in the world to follow. And I, that's that's the biggest thing that I love most about the lives is when you're watching them, you understand what he's talking about. It's not complex. It's not a different language. It's not stuff that would be difficult to understand. You, you, you you can relate to it. And that that's super important. I think for any, anyone teaching is to have that delivery because I'm sure, and I, and I know because I'm friends with a, with a guy that teaches ICT, I'm sure his delivery of ICT teachings would be a lot better than, than how ICT would do it, but it doesn't mean he's better. It just means he's better at delivery. But that's, that's something else that we're fortunate with as well is, you know, he might not have experience in teaching, teaching people, but M7 has this way of, of making you, you know, just, want to listen and i'm sure that if we did a marathon of of lives where he was on for 24 hours people would be on for that that amount of time and would want to listen and that's that's the super cool thing about it so we are we are very fortunate yeah at 100 percent, i feel that way too you know like i said earlier i've shifted i mean i was trading entirely different stuff and then i actually have a friend that 
that joined the academy and he said, Taylor, you gotta, you gotta look at this. And I, I promise you, Taylor, if, as soon as you start looking at this, you're going to dump everything that you do. <laughs> and I'm like, no way. <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing fine. And sure enough, I, I got in, I'm like, oh my gosh, like it, it's not only innovative, it's not only the most innovative trading approach that's come along in decades, honestly, like we have to be very clear about this. There's, this has not been done before and it's just insanely innovative. But it, like you said, it just makes sense. It just, for me, it just clicked. It was just clicked and it's the happy medium. So anyone who's actually, you know, depending on where you're at in your trading, I always like to say like, there's, there's discretion like here. Let me do my little can you see there's discretionary trading on the one end of the spectrum and then there's mechanical on the other end of the spectrum. There's pros and cons to both, right? Like you, like it doesn't matter what you choose. There's going to be pros and cons. This just has such a nice, happy mixture of a little bit of discretion, quite a bit of mechanical in it. And it helps to really alleviate a lot of the mindset challenges that come along with discretionary trading. It makes things very clear when you're supposed to enter, where you're supposed to enter. And for me, it just really resonated. And so like yeah. you, you know, yeah, those first few months, a little rough, but. Yeah, totally I mean, it's, it, I, it I, is. I, and, and like, you've got to have that, you know, you've got to have that realistic vision that it's not just going to happen overnight. And literally, like I, I keep telling myself, like, I'm still not at that point of where, you know, um, you know, where I'm ultimately going to end up. And that that's cool. And, and I'm all right with that. And I've come a long way from from where I was three months ago I've come a long way from where I was six months ago and I've come a long way from where I was 16 months ago Uh, and it's forever learning but um yeah we're we're in a a very fortunate position where you said like everything is it's never been done before and I think that's I think that either really entices people to want to join or it really scares people because they don't know and they what and what they don't know they fear but I can tell you something now if you fear it and you don't want to get to know you'll be left behind and I can, I can hand on heart say that with very, with high confidence because the stuff that, that I get to see that the Academy is shown, how we've developed from where we were six, seven, eight months ago to where we are now, this isn't stopping, you know, this is always going to be continual to learn and it's always going to, it's going to improve. Like I mentioned, you know, the, the Quantex is only version, I think maybe they were called Prism first and then it was changed to, to Quantex. But then that's going to, you know, that's going to change and then be, you know, have machine learning elements to it. So it's always developing. And I think it's just crazy how that, that, that tech is coming into the retail world. And like you said, it's never, it's never been done before. And I'm so, I'm so psyched to be part of like the first generation students, like I'm day one. Yeah. Um, it's like people take the piss out of me and call me an M7 fanboy. Like I don't, but I don't give a shit. I don't care. Like, I, think the guy, <laughs> I think the guy's cool as fuck. I think he's mint. Um, and uh, he's, like, he's like, he's shown his true colors to me. Like, you know, so, um, you know, those people that say, oh, he's this, that, and the other. Listen, I can tell you from, from experience, you know, he's got people's best interests at heart. And, yeah. you know, yeah, it's just it's just a fortunate position to be in. And like I said, you know, I don't think, you know, those that, that have experienced it, that have put in the work, would say any different. Yes, we've had a few bad eggs, but let's be honest, have those bad eggs put in the work? I don't think so. Yeah. Um, those that genuinely put in the work, that are genuine to themselves who put in the work, you can't fail at this. You, ca- it's, it's impossible to fail at it. You know, he's given us an amount of data. He's given us so many back tests to prove that, you know, you can be, can be profitable with the lowest of win rate, you know, and as long as you're consistent and and keep on, you know, keep on doing what you need to do, you will be profitable. So it's just about that person really, because at the mo- at, at the end of the day, you can be given all the best tools in the world, but if you haven't got the right mindset to execute it, then it's kind of pointless and it's redundant. And that's, that's where I was struggling with at the start. And I think it wasn't about being able to read the data or, you know, being able to understand what he's teaching, it was the demons that I had to deal with within myself, which I'm still continually doing every single day. Yeah, it's it's just it's just great to be to be part of the world and and the trading world, should I say, and and be in the academy. So, I love it, dude. I really appreciate you. I appreciate the time. I appreciate the work you put in. I appreciate the example. I appreciate what you're doing for our community. 
So thank you. Thank you so much. This was, I was so excited to meet you and totally, just, totally met all my, my high expectations. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm sorry that I didn't have a camera and I um, apologize. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah. ne- next time we can, you know, if there's a next time we can, we can get that on, but yeah, thank, thanks for having me. It was, uh, it's good to share because I think sometimes, you know, the, the Twitter space, the social media can be full of positives. It can become, you know, oh, you know, this person's doing that, that person's doing that. But they don't ever talk about the the struggles that people are having. They don't ever talk about those issues. And it's almost like they're non-existent and they never happened. So when you're going through them, you think you're on your own with it because nobody else is expressing those feelings. But I can tell you now that you're not. And Every, every trader will go through it. If you don't, you, you're in a, a, you know, you're one of the very few. You're an outlier. Yeah. You're, you're in the 1% of people that didn't struggle from a mental aspect of it. So you're not on your own. It's just people, people choose to only show you what they want to, you know, what they want to show. And ultimately yeah. it's only ever going to be positive stuff. But I, I, you know, I was, I was transparent on the last podcast that was on in regards to, you know, the mental aspects. I'm always, talking about this on the student stages. I'll always talk about this, in, in, you know, openly to people that, you know, I've been through a hell of a, hell of a lot of struggles and you're not on your own with it, but you just got to keep on, you know, you just got to keep on going through it and, and keep showing up and keep putting in the work. And ultimately it will pay off. Um, you know, it will pay off and, and you'll get to a stage of where you'll look back and think, fuck me, that was a hell of a journey. Yeah. <laughs> because I will do, I know I will. I know I'll look back in another, you know, in another, four, five, six years and I'm going, oh my God, like where I am now, like that story was amazing. Yeah. It's been fucking hard to get through it, but fuck me, what a story it was to get there. Uh, And that's exciting. That's an exciting part as well to be able to look back at that and think, shit, I'm so glad I didn't give up because like I said, there's been so many times where I've wanted to do it, but I just, I can't, I can't give up. I can't, it's not, it's not something that I can do. I have to keep going until it either kills me or I end up being really successful at it. That's just, that's just who I am. I'm going to die or yeah. succeed. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's, that's the intensity, right? That's the intensity. You have to have it. You have to have it. Yeah. And, and it, this is a little bit of a joke. It's not a joke, but like it's, people find this maybe funny, but I, in 2019, before COVID kicked in, I was sat at my desk at work and I went, do you know what? I want better teeth. I want better teeth. I don't like my teeth. I want better teeth. Within two weeks, I'd flown to a different country and got a new set of uh, new set of railings. <laughs> but that's what I have to do. I've got something in my head. I have to. I have to do it until it happens. Because if I yeah. don't do it, it'll plague me forever. We all need a little bit of that. You know, you could like somehow like pass that little fairy dust out to everybody to make yeah, sure like you know that. it's just, that little it's, OCD it's stupid that but like that's honestly no, like, that's it. truthful like I was sat there thinking oh well, I want new teeth and then I couldn't stop thinking about having new teeth and I thought right I need to go through and I need to do this and I did it until I got new teeth but like, I want to know like I'm, I'm just curious everything. I want to know all the little things that you've obsessed over throughout your whole life that would be um, that would be an amazing little book to read. There's been there's been a lot of a lot of a lot of them, but there's also been a lot of stuff where I've actually recognised that it's not good as well, um, and I've had to really you know shape up on that because ultimately that was only going to have a negative effect on my trading career. So you know, again, you know, we talk about the trading aspect and what the academy brings, but we I've not mentioned the mindset kind of thing because that's yeah. really at the forefront of M 7s um, mind all the time because yes of course we want to trade and yes of course we want to learn new things and yes we want to see what he's got to deliver next but I think people really don't don't realize the importance of the mind aspect of it and how he drills it into us and we and again we're fortunate we have Lewis as well who's our performance coach who's brilliant and we have a performance session every Sunday that's just dedicated to mindset and, and improving that and how to enhance that and have a better quality of life and and that's another cool thing about the academy that it's not just about trading it's about having a really strong mindset and how we can utilize the tools that we're given within the academy to help better ourselves. And that's something again, that I'll always be thankful for, for M7 is being able to shape my mind to, to be in a better position and to be in a better place than it was, you know, a year ago. So, you know, if, if all else fails and, you know, I do, I do kill myself trading, at least I'll have had a better mindset. (laughs) That's right. That's right. I love it. All right, my friend, 
you guys can follow John on also known as twist on Twitter. So it's at, it, let me get this right. T W I five T Z. Yes. I think so. T W. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. T W I five. You had to do the five, right? Cause they don't, they don't allow a dollar sign. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. I think someone might've taken it. Um, I can't remember, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, either way, but yeah, I love it. All right, you guys, thanks a ton for showing up and being here. And um, thank you again, John. This was amazing. This yeah, was no really worries, great. Man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Check out my YouTube channel at The Profit Factor on YouTube. But if you really want to amp up your trading game, take a look at my Consistency Accelerator program. This is a program that was designed to systematically help you become consistently profitable. It includes coaching and course material around edge, process, and even mindset. Check it out at www.getTheProfitFactor.com.